Good morning everybody, it's Claire Jones here from Your One Life Healthy Weight Solutions. It's Monday the 11th of July, it's just gone 9am, I'm sorry I'm a few minutes later, and something last minute I had to deal with. Um, I hope you're all well. Um, some of you may have seen, I'm struggling a little bit this week, I've, um, I'm morning Stella. Um, I've got, um, I'm having a bit of a flare up of my, my back, uh, which is a problem I've had for many years, and every now and then it just reminds me that it's there. And um, it just means that I have to basically tone everything down and um, look after myself a little bit. Morning, Stella. Morning, Jenny. Um, and I'm a little bit kind of um, spaced out from the painkillers, so uh, bear with me. I'm not quite at my my normal cheerful self this morning, but uh, but here I am, and I'll do my best to um, to get through this session for you without um, too much pain. Um, but uh, anyway, I'm here and that's the main thing. So uh, I hope you're all well. Um, obviously, if you are watching live or on replay, do say um, say so, say hello. Um, it's always good to know that, um, you know, people are watching. But also, as I've said previously, it does help other people to know that I've gone live so they can tune in as well if they're free and um, or if they're wanting to watch on catch up. So, um, so that's all good. So what I'm going to be talking about today is... Um, well, I'm struggling to kind of like cap encapsulate it in a, in a heading, but, but the bottom line is it's this whole kind of like eat less, move more thing that we're told is what we need to do to lose weight. And um, why, in my view, it's not as simple as that. And there is a number of good reasons why it's not as simple as that. And it, this is why so many of us struggle with the concept of eating less and moving more. And I have to say... You know, my experience, um, I've never been able to do both at the same time um, because I find it's impossible to, to stick to. Um, so so basically what, what the problem is, is that obviously when we're, when we're trying to um, eat less and move more at the same time, we're doing two opposing things at the same time. And that actually, as far as our body is concerned, is, is we're asking pretty much the impossible. And so, of course, what I see a lot, um, and which is what, what's prompted me to, to talk about this, is that I see a lot all over social media, you know, people saying, oh, I've just done this, this, this workout and I, 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 I'm doing it fasted, which, you know, basically means they haven't eaten anything before they've been working out. Or they may be doing um, quite a strict weight loss program and then doing loads and loads of exercise on top, which whilst may give us results in the short run for many of us it's not actually sustainable and can actually be the cause of our undoing and ending up uh, so, you know it meaning that we we fall off and end up you know going into reverse and, and ending up back where we started now that you know i'm not talking about everybody but that is certainly what i see um, a lot of people do and also has been my own experience and i'm always keen to share my own experience because after 25 years of yo-yo dieting I think I've got quite a lot of experience that I know is is that I know resonates with, with others so and it's one of the reasons why I do what I do and obviously the fact that I've been able to overcome that for the last 11 years um I do think that you know I'm, I'm well placed to be able to to share some of that um so I've just made a few notes that I'm just going to talk through with you um on you know what this problem is and, and also what we can do about it because you know it's not impossible to to overcome this it is it's about working with our bodies rather than trying to work against them so so basically if, if we to think of our body as a high performance car and we want to make sure that if we want that high performance car to do high performance we want to fuel it appropriately don't we so of course if we are um perhaps going into the gym or going out running, or going swimming, or hiking, or, or aerobics, or yoga, or whatever whatever your preferred activity is. If you're not fueling your high performance car to do that activity, is it likely to be able to perform in the way that you want it to? That's a question I'd like you to to, to just um, think about for a moment. Because, you know, in, in my view, and certainly in terms of obviously the training that I've done, is that, you know, if we're, if we're you know, leaving the energy pool, uh, as, as the, you know, there is no energy left. So we're using the, the, the dregs that are at the bottom of the fuel tank 
for our workout, we are not going to get as good a workout as if we fueled it appropriately. In the same way as that high performance car is not going to work well if it's running on the dregs that are at the bottom of the, the, the fuel tank. So, um, so we really need to sort of bear that in mind when we're thinking about um, eating less and moving more, because we've got to make sure that if we want to do a lot of exercise, we've got to fuel it appropriately. The problem with that, of course, is that when we eat less, it's really hard to fuel the body appropriately for good exercise. And therein lies the conundrum. So, obviously, when we're trying to eat less um, and move more, as I say, we're trying to do these two opposing things. And the problem with that is that, you know, the number one goal of our body and our brain is survival, which means eating enough. Yeah. Um, and the number two goal is, is reproduction, which means obviously for, for women, um, there needs to be sufficient fat on the body in order to be able to um, to to carry a healthy baby and and then nurture that baby. So if we're trying to eat less, our body isn't going to like it. So. So if we're, we're trying to, you know, reduce what we're what we're taking in and we're also um, doing lots of exercise, it's it's a double whammy on the on the body's survival instinct. And, they're, you know, whilst as say we might get some short term results and think, yeah, this is great. This is working. Look at, you know, I've lost the stone after a short period of time or maybe longer um, that stops working because those biological forces, those survival instincts kick in and they're very, very strong. And this is what then um, influences our thinking and our mood and all of those things that kind of make us think, do you know what? Um, we, we don't even maybe have a conscious thought, we just end up binging or we end up, you know, just saying yes to things that previously we were saying no to. So it's really important to bear these things in mind that they're going on in the background when we're trying to lose weight. So. Um, so of course, you know, if we're if we're losing, if we're if we're um, moving more, we need more energy. So our bodies, obviously, are also going to be fighting back and making us want to consume more energy. Which, if we're trying to eat less, it's really really hard. So we get more hungry, we get irritable, we get grumpy, we get tired, we get we get moody, we get, um, you know, all of and then all of those, you know. The easy reasons to eat more just seem more attractive and then we end up um, succumbing to them so so and also if we're if we're um, moving more we might maybe do you know an hour or two of really intense exercise but of course the body later on in the day is going to make you pay for that by making you more tired and make you want to move less so the net effect in the overall course of the day maybe much less than you think. So if your fitness tracker is saying you burnt 500 calories doing something, um, you may have done, but you may have saved calories elsewhere in the day, meaning that the overall net effect is much less. So if you've eaten extra 500 calories thinking you could because you've exercised, in reality, you may not have, you may end up in a surplus. So, so these are the things that we need to be really aware of. Because obviously, you know, when we're, when we're, um, trying to lose weight our body will try and conserve energy which is goes is counterproductive it goes against what we're trying to do and those survival instincts are very very strong so obviously after a while if we find that um you know we're, we're not getting anywhere because we've, we've we've done all this hard work and then it starts to become really hard to stick to and we start to think there must be something wrong with us because we can't do it anymore when in actual fact it means that there's everything right with you. It means that your body is doing what it's supposed to. It's actually ensuring your survival by making you want to eat more. Unfortunately, as I've said previously, the world we're living in, you know, our bodies don't know. There's no, there's no switch that says, right, you've put on enough fat now. It will keep going. It will keep going until, um, until you know, it, it, our, our, unfortunately, our, our systems start failing. So, um, so if you find that you're, um, you know, you're getting more hungry after doing lots of exercise or you're getting more hungry after having restricted your calories for a little while and been very active, um, it's no surprise that it becomes harder. And the closer we get to our goal, the harder still, because as well as not only reducing our calorie intake, we're also um, reducing the deficit because smaller bodies need less fuel to, to move. So it becomes harder to create that calorie deficit. So these are all the reasons why it's really hard. And these are things we need to be aware of so that when we're constructing our plans of what we're going to do, we've got to work with our bodies and not against them. So in my opinion um, and in my experience, um, we have 
two choices. Um, we can eat less and just make sure we're moving regularly because movement is really, really important. We are not supposed to be sedentary. sedentary. Being sedentary is one of the worst things we can do. And I appreciate that, you know, not everybody is able to be very active, but it's just making sure that you move as much as you can within the constraints of your um, your, your life and, and anything that may be going on for you. And obviously don't try and do lots and lots overnight. You know, this is about, you know, gradually making changes that are, um, you know, sustainable. Um, and, um, and obviously wherever you can, build in some resistance training. Uh, now that doesn't have to mean going down to the gym three times a week and, and pushing the weights and lifting weights and you know working on the machines. Um, I did say a les yesterday, sorry I've got these messages come off my screen on Monday mornings. Um, I had this, um, I did this, share this little post yesterday just on little ways that you can increase um, exercise into your life, um, particularly resistance training because that's so, so important for our strength and conditioning and our general wellness and looking after our future health um, and preventing the worst effects of aging. Because again, another thing that we're not really designed to do is get old. You know, if you think back to when our, 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 our um, you know, human humanity developed, um, the, the average life expectancy was less than 40. You know? And yet, you know, here we are expecting to leave, live at least double that. So we've got a whole new set of problems that we need to, uh, we need to manage. And obviously things like arthritis, is one of them and if we're not looking after our our um our muscles and our joints then we're going to have all sorts of problems as we get older so resistance training is really important with that as well as being able to retain your ability to burn calories in the future because the less muscle mass we have the less calories our bodies need each day if we're not telling our body that we need that muscle it's not going to keep it as we lose weight or as we age so and when we get to menopause, there's all sorts of hormones that kick in that, that actually make that worse. So, you know, do bear in mind these are the things that, that we need to be, be doing. So that's, cho that's, that's choice one is, is obviously, you know, eat less, um, not too much less because, you know, we want to work with the body, not against it. Um, but we'd need to be in a calorie deficit. And, and obviously one of the, the ways of doing that is working out what do you need for maintenance and then start reducing it. Um, and there's lots of um, calorie um, uh, calculators out there that can give you a guide. But remember, it is only a guide. You need to work with your body. You need to find out what's right for your body. So that's eat less, but make sure you move regularly. Or you can move a lot more, but you've got to accept that you're going to eat. You need to eat more if you're going to use move a lot more. So when I say eat more, I mean I don't necessarily mean eat more than what you were eating if you were putting on weight, but just in terms of if you think about what your calorie deficit might need to be, you might need to raise what you're what you're eating, which actually is much harder to do. Um, if I'm honest, it's harder to to find out what you need to eat to um, to lose weight whilst exercising a lot. Um, so it's one of those you, you've got to try and find out what's what's right for you but just bear in mind that you know if you are going to to move a lot more you're going to need to eat to fuel that exercise otherwise your body is only going to fight back and 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 get in the way so so it's, it's that, that's your other choice really and and i i believe that um the the move more side of the equation is much more effective when we're close to a goal, when we're close to, to our goal weight. So, um, because we we want to be able to increase our muscle mass um, in order to be able to create a bigger deficit and we need to eat enough to be able to do that. So, um, so that's why when we get close to our goal, it's it's harder to, to maintain a, a calorie deficit without, without exercise. Um, it's one of those, it's a bit of a conundrum. So, by by using a lot more exercise when we're close to goal what we're doing is we're changing our body composition which gradually increases the ability of our bodies to to burn more calories so we may find that we don't lose any weight but over a period of time we may find that you know our clothes get a little bit looser because we're getting more toned up but that's not quite so easy to do when we've got a lot to lose um but yeah, it's one of those you, you, you figure it out for yourself. But what I'm saying is if you're trying to eat a lot less, 
and move a lot more, it's going to likely result in a short term benefit, but in the longer term, it's going to be harder to sustain and may not get you the results that you want. So you may need to think about, do you want to eat a lot less? And so not a lot less, but you know, not so. So don't go too low on the calories, but just make sure that you are not trying to eat to do loads of exercise at the same time because you're just it's going to be like burning the candle at both ends you're not going to be able to sustain it for long whereas if you're moving a lot more then you may need to consider what calorie deficit you're going to be able to create with that both in the short term and in the longer term because the short term as I say you may get quick results but after a little while your body is going to start saying actually no this is not sustainable and what can you do to, to manage that so really just want to make you aware of the all these forces that are at play and that it's not quite as simple as just eat less move more and you may need to think which which direction is going to be right for you at any given time and that doesn't mean say you have to stick to the same thing all the time you could have a period where you're eating a lot less and not, not moving that much followed by a period where you're eating a lot more and doing a lot more exercise and to be honest that's what I did that was what made me successful in, in being able to lose the weight and keep it off is I cycled between doing those two things um, over different periods of time. Anyway, I'm going to have to leave it there because I've gone on far longer than I meant to um, and I've, I need to be elsewhere. But um, I hope that's helpful. I'm sorry it's a bit rambly this morning. I'm just sort of a bit, bit dazed out with my painkillers. So um, apologies if I'm not quite a normal bright self. But um, hopefully next week I'll be back to normal. So have a have a good week. Be careful in this heat. I know we're expecting it to be, um, certainly in the UK, um, a really, really hot week. Um, so make sure you're hydrating. So if, if you're doing the, the monthly challenge and hydration is your challenge, make sure that you're um, taking into account the, the, the weather. You may need to up your intake a little bit, but not too much. We don't need to go overboard, but just make sure um, sipping regularly throughout the day. Um, and keeping an eye on your, the colour of your wee, because that will be a good indication of whether you're getting enough fluid or not. Okay, I will see you all soon. Take care. Have a good week. Bye.